Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, and then we will put a Jesus. So what we're gonna do Russell, speak properly. Jesus, this shouldn't be this is <laughs> hard. I'm vibrating away, yeah. Not in a good way. Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going back to building the scooter, the E300, Razor E300, you could call it if you want to be pedantic. So as you remember from previous videos, we've uh, stripped it down, ready for paint. So today's uh, agenda, I suppose you could call it, is we're gonna key up the paintwork on the frame, uh, ready for a first coat of primer. Gotta do a bit of masking, so we're gonna mask up anything that we don't want painted black. So that's these, these chrome, uh, bolt nuts and bolts here and then the chrome kickstart kickstart kickstand I think it's called you'll notice I haven't been posting as many videos as I was I did come out here the other day to to film this video and as I was as I was talking there was just steam coming out of my mouth uh, because it was so cold it is a little bit cold tonight but I will bear with it and just man up and get on with it so before I start the painting, something arrived in the post. Give me two secs. Why is everywhere now? Uh, this arrived in the post the other day. Super excited about it. Uh, it's come all the way from Hong Kong. Uh, as I was saying, this has come all the way from Hong Kong. Uh, this is hence the protection. So wish me luck. So I've just Googled it and you can't catch the coronavirus from opening packages from Hong Kong. So we're all good. Uh, nothing's gonna jump out and attack me and give me some flu type virus. So basically this is what I was telling you guys in a previous video, what I wanted to do with this build. So what we have here is the motor from a Xiaomi M365 electric scooter so the plan is and this is like completely i've got no clue whether this is going to work i've just kind of like did a little bit of research i'm talking a little bit of research and i kind of don't see why it shouldn't work but at the same time i might have just wasted 50 odd quid on this uh, so the idea is is i want to do away with the traditional Razer E300 motor, 24 volt, and I bought a brushed uh, 36 volt um, Xiaomi M365 wheel motor. Uh, so I'm hoping with this and the lithium batteries that I want to install in it, we should be good to go. As you remember from season one, I actually bought all of the control um, controller for this actual motor, but I then discovered that I didn't actually need this with the build I was doing. Uh, so we've still got this, and we've still got uh, obviously the brake cable, uh, brake lever, we've got the throttle, uh, the display. So technically, if this does work, I've got everything bar the Xiaomi M365 frame. So I've got a Razer E300 frame. There should be no reason why it doesn't work. Straight away, I can actually see something that, like a spanner in the works. We kind of tend to get them quite a lot on this show. Looking at what I've got here, there's about, about an inch gap between the wheel and the bolts. So I need to try and work out how I'm gonna, whether I cut this when I say when I'm gonna cut this, I might have to get my friend Dave on the case again to shorten these front forks, do a bit of welding, as he's quite good at things like that. Uh, but what I'll probably do before I do any of that is get all this running. So I get the wheel, the controller, the throttle, and the battery all laid out on the bench. We we'll connect it all up and just make sure that when I touch the throttle, the wheel goes round, uh, the display's working, and then it's just a case of just fitting it straight onto here. 
and I'm not sure if anyone's done this before. I'm not sure I'm going to be the first, but I've, I've been looking on YouTube and I haven't seen anybody else do it. So there is that. It could be the world's first um, E300 M365. I, I was actually going to start calling it this brand of uh, electric scooters I do, a uh, Nikolai. Uh, after Nikola Tesla, I think that's quite a nice tribute to him. But at the end of the day, I'm just a dude in the back of the garden in a shed with, you know, a couple of quid thrown here and there on some electric parts that I haven't got a clue whether they work or how they work. So maybe I'm jumping the gun, giving it the, such a decent title as the Nikolai Tesla. We can dream, can't we? So obviously, I do know that. Um, if I do have to do any welding to this, it's probably going to need painting again. Um, but there's no big, big issue there. Um, it's a spray can and a couple of bits of sandpaper at the end of the day. Just want to quickly show you actually before I put it all away. This is the old style wheel and this is the new style wheel with the motor built into it. Uh, as you can see, there's clearly a difference in uh, the width of the wheel. I do prefer the chunkier wheel, I think it looks cooler. But at the end of the day, we're trying to go for something that's going to go further, go quicker and last longer. So we're going to go with this, this style wheel. So now I'm not going with the old style motor. I've got this extra sort of four or five inches of gap that I can use to, for an extended battery. So for me, that seems like a good move. The battery seems to be a bit, a bit of a, a dead weight anyway. Not very quick, very noisy. Um, and a bit if i'm honest it's a little bit dated with what we've got nowadays so i want to try and modernize things and you know get things running as we've got them now so you know it should be quite fun so back to the build let's start doing some um keying up so for keying up basically what you want to do is get yourself a scotch pad um, and the scotch pad is basically what you're going to do is lightly scratch the surface of the paint and what that would do is give the paint something to like latch onto. Uh, if you don't do this and you spray straight onto shiny metal, it will just flake off eventually and look very cheap and nasty. So you're best spending a little bit of time doing this preparation because your end result will be much better. The best way to do is show you. So basically you get your scotch pad and you're just going over like that. And what you want to do is you want that shiny paint to look a bit dull. Um, probably like my personality, but if you ask some people. So you're gonna go from a, a shiny paint to a dull, slightly scratched paint. It's very easy to achieve. Uh, you don't have to put much pressure on it. But what you do wanna do is just make sure all of your metal has been keyed up. So we don't need the whole scotch pad. So I'm just gonna cut, cut it in half. I'm just going to lightly go over all of the frame, making it dull and not shiny. What you're best doing is literally working your way around the frame rather than just keep dotting around because you will miss things. Boring, isn't it? I didn't say it would be interesting, did I? Still there? Yeah. Good. You thought watching paint dry was boring. It's got nothing on this. You probably noticed I've put some white panels up. I think they look a bit to be honest with you, so they might be coming down in the near future. Kind of done them to try and brighten the place up and make it look a bit better. Has it done that? Probably not. Never mind, it's worth a try. Right, so that's the frame all keyed up and looking dull which is quite shocking really because the Razer E300 frame looked very dull before anyway. We've got the handlebars, not forgetting these bad boys. Work that shaft, done this before. <coughs> Calm down. I know what you're thinking, you perverts. That is the Razer E300 front pole scratched and ready to go, which is nice. Let's get that glue off of there. Uh, 
and that's the glue gun. About bloody time. I must have. Ooh. That'll do, donkey. That'll do. So I've got to do a bit of painting now. Um, I don't want to get paint on my camera. That's like a must not to do. I've got to work out where to spray. Not really thought this out, have I? Need somewhere to paint where it's not going to get everywhere. Move this camera. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to spray some primer onto the frame. Can you see me? Yeah. You want to leave about a six to eight inch gap from the frame, and you want to try and go in even strokes to try and uh, get an even coat of paint over your frame. They say you should use it in a well ventilated area. There is a good reason for that. I am probably as high as a kite right now, breathing paint fumes and seeing pink elephants floating around with big green trunks. Only joking. <laughs> so they say you should, uh, whenever you paint, you should be in a well ventilated area. Obviously uh, a shed that's Eight foot by ten foot is probably not the most ventilated area I've ever painted in. Probably not my best, brightest idea. Uh, so I think I'm going to let this dry overnight and ring my pal and see whether I could use uh, his spray roof because he's got one and you know probably a little bit safer. So if I don't see you soon, take it easy, guys. Thank you for watching. Uh, subscribe somewhere down. Give us a thumbs up. Subscribe somewhere down the bottom, and I'll catch you in the next one.